What's up guys, it's Tommy here and welcome to a brand new, very exciting Liverpool transfer news video and we will talk about a lot of things in this video. The first one is that Liverpool are interested in explosive Wolves winger Adama Traore and we have a knack of signing players who have been who Liverpool have been scouting and monitoring for many years and Liverpool were even interested in Adama Traore when he was play, playing for Barcelona's B team in the second division of Spanish football many many years ago not that many but like four years ago I remember doing uh, some videos on Adama Traore back then when we, uh, he was playing for Barcelona B he has come a long way since then and we will also talk about Minamino and what kind of role Jurgen Klopp will give him we will also talk about how much Liverpool could earn from the Nike huge kit deal uh, we had uh, some experts uh, share some opinion on that and also we will talk about Ryan Brewster's move to Swansea City and what we can expect from him there so lots of information in this video packed into for you guys for your enjoyment so if you enjoy these videos leave a like and subscribe it to my channel if you are new and I like to call Adam Traore the arch nemesis of South Guardiola and Manchester City he's like the Manchester City killer because he has been in in devastating form especially against Manchester City he scored two goals at the Etihad and he I think uh, scored and set up a goal at the, the Wolves Stadium so Wolves for the first time in the first division since 1960 beat Manchester City home and away thanks to Adama Traore and I think Liverpool of course would like to sign him but there are other clubs interested in him uh, the reports are saying that Manchester City and Barcelona are also interested in Adama Traore uh, according to the report, the January transfer is not looking likely because Wolves really want to secure European football once again to finish at least in the top 6, top 7 of the Premier League. So maybe a summer bid uh, from any of those three clubs are you know, more likely. And Traore has had a long reputation for being an erratic footballer when it comes to end product, but he has improved massively. And this season, I think, is his breakthrough season, his best season, because he has four goals and four assists in the Premier League and also other uh, goals and assists in uh, other competitions for Wolves. Uh, of course, as a 23-year-old, it would be a little bit of a risky signing because he's a kind of unpredictable, a little bit inconsistent player. But his pace and his physicality would have have the potential for Liverpool to absolutely destroy opposition defenses like he has done so many many times before in the Premier League but the thing is the price tag 70 million pounds for that amount of money you would want a proven goal scorer or at least a winger who has proven to be consistently producing at the top level for at least two or three years. Adama Traore has the potential to become that player, but right now he only has one season so far where he consistently produces at the top level. The uh, half season, last season and the first half of this season basically. So it's a little bit of an issue judging whether uh, Liverpool should make a move uh, for the Spaniard or not. It's always difficult to put a real true price on a player as they are always worth what somebody is willing to pay for, for that player. But that seems to be like a really big fee for a player who has flashed at times and who has been explosive at times but that he has just five goals and seven assists in total since he started playing Premier League football so far it's not like a, a no-brainer signing to be honest and Adam Atrori himself spoke about his future earlier this week and he spoke about his desire to return to La Liga to play for either Barcelona or Real Madrid this is what he said if I do not have the option to uh, to go back to Barcelona and I have to go to Real Madrid, I do not close any doors. There was a mis misunderstanding with Barcelona. Something happened that I didn't like, but I prefer to keep that for myself. Yes, why not return to Spain? But I made the promise to become one of the best in England. And Wolves uh, boss Nuno Espirito Santo has recently tried 
to basically cool down the rumors, the exit rumors on Adama Traore. This is what he said. He has a contract with the club, he's happy here, he puts a lot of energy and dedication into things and he wants to improve. He's happy. Things that happen outside, like rumors, we can't control. So it's a very interesting situation that Adama Traore is basically flirting with other clubs while his manager clearly doesn't want to sell him. But I think that Liverpool will take a long hard look on him and, and decide whether to sign him or not. For 70 million I don't think he's worth it. We can get much much better players for that amount. We can get Kai Havertz, we can get even Timo Werner. Players who are like twice or three times as productive and as consistent as a more productive, more consistent than Adama Traore. But I will keep you updated if it happens. So Liverpool recently confirmed that we will have Nike as our official uh, kit uh, sponsor for next, from next season. And the deal expect is expected to be huge, but we don't really know how huge it is. A new estimation from a sports marketing expert believes that Nike and uh, Liverpool could uh, actually bring in a lot of money. It has been reported that Liverpool could turn over as many as 30 million pounds per season with Nike's distribution and that included a factor of 20% in royalties from any merchandise sold connected to Liverpool. And this is what uh, the sports marketing expert Alan Seymour told the e Evening Standard that uh, working with Nike will be huge for Liverpool. He estimates that we could even triple what we got from the previous deal with New Balance. You cannot understate just the sheer opportunity that will come from being as associated with this brand and I think all of those things will add attractiveness. This is what he said. The deal that Liverpool have done with Nike is a brilliant starting point. It will evolve from there and there will be lots of things that happen alongside it. Yes, there's a base figure just to have your name alongside it, but all of the partners, all of the players in this, there are a lot of them. There's, that's the crucial part. It's very, very felt well thought out, like everything Liverpool do. So it will be all about the associations with other celebrities, the pull of Nike as a brand and all the other iconic people. Then it's about the merchandising, the sales potential. We are led to believe that the commission is going to be up to 20%. So in terms of actual value, when you equate and add in the way that it's been structured, when you start to add all these things together, then we are talking, I would suggest, in excess of 80 million pounds and upwards to the 100 million pound value. Of course, this is all hypothetical, hypothetical and it remains to be seen if Liverpool and Nike will be able to triple what had been sp spoken about in court. Nike's ability to sell merchandise all over the world, having uh, more than uh, 6,000 retail stores all over the world, is huge and also Nike has a lot of famous people as celebrities, as their ambassadors who could also promote Liverpool in uh, some uh, capacity sooner or later. It adds a lot of potential to this deal. So I'm very excited what Liverpool and Nike will be doing. What I really hope is that we won't have those bland like copy and paste uh, Nike kits that other clubs got in previous seasons. I really, really hope uh, that Liverpool will have some unique designers working with Nike on their kits. So we will have some really original, unique kits and hopefully they will be even better than New Balance. But I will be happy if it's just as good as New Balance kits were in previous seasons. And there is an official transfer which went through. Liverpool finally sold a Brazilian player, Alan, who has been on Liverpool books for, for actually quite a few years. But unluckily for him, ever since we signed Alan, we just couldn't get him a work permit. So we, in the end, sold him back to Brazil to uh, Atletico Mineiro I think for 3.2 million pounds uh, and I will be honest I feel quite sorry for this guy because when he signed for Liverpool it was one of the most exciting moment in his whole life to sign for one of the best clubs in the world from Brazil 
is amazing, but he never got a work permit because he wasn't a Brazil international at the time. And basically we sent him out to, on loan to German team Hertha Berlin and to other clubs. And he just never, could never play for Liverpool. He, he could never acquire a work permit. It, the deal is now worth 3.2 million pounds, which gives us a tidy pro profit on a player who Liverpool could never use basically because of work permit issues and also this uh, is clever from Michael Edwards there is a 10% sell-on fee that we have also agreed with Atletico Mineiro meaning that if Alan is sold to uh, another club for big money or even for a small amount Liverpool get 10% of that. So if Alan turns out to become a world-class player and he is sold for like 30 million pounds, Liverpool will get 3 million, another 3 million on top of the 3 million that we got for him. So as for the player, I wish him all the best and I wish him a very successful career in Atletico Mineiro. I think he really needs to settle at the club and to play regularly there because uh, it's, it was just uh, very unlucky that he he kept extending the loan spells at various clubs in the hopes of one day returning to Liverpool and actually properly playing for them. But it never happened and I feel a little bit sorry for this guy. And what this means and is that since Jurgen Klopp took over, so since October 2015, Liverpool's net spend is around £67 million. Which is mind-blowing to think that Liverpool went from 8th place in the Premier League to champions of Europe, champions of the world, potential Premier League winners and just spent 67 million in total. If you deduct the player sales from the player buys, you get 67 million and that is simply ast astonishing what Jurgen Klopp and Liverpool have done and it probably makes a mockery of, of other clubs. I mean, Manchester City in that time have a net spend of like 500 million. Man United probably have a net spend of like 400 million from that period for the last four years. So for Liverpool to do this with having spent such little money, I think that is, it's incredible. And it's just, it's just smart transfers smart transfer deals liverpool always sold players with a big profit we sold danny ward solanke ryan Kent, sacco benteke kevin stewart philip coutinho luis suarez for a big big profit all of them we sold for a big big profit maybe benteke is the only one where we kind of broke even didn't make a big profit even andy carroll we sold him for um, almost the same amount as we bought him for. So I think that uh, Liverpool made some very, very smart transfer decisions and it's down to Michael Edwards and the whole transfer committee. So I congratulate Liverpool to build a team like Liverpool have right now with just 67 million net spend is outrageous in just four years to go from eighth place in the Premier League to first and to champions of Europe is out of this world and I'm so so happy that we have done this. So Ryan Brewster it's official he joined the Swansea City on loan and uh, Swansea already will have a big Welsh derby coming up so so Ryan Brewster will have uh, the best possible game to play in uh, in his debut Cardiff City against Swansea is always a huge huge game probably the biggest game of Swansea season so it's, be it's the best time for Ryan Brewster to join them and this is what Jurgen Klopp said about Ryan Brewster's loan move to Swansea City they are all individual plans of course for all the young players there are different ways uh, what do these boys have to do they have to develop and we have to think about it how can they develop in the best way? Our squad this year, in this moment, they have very, very important parts in the squad and a very important job in the squad. Today again, yesterday again, the day before yesterday, we will have three or four normal sessions this week, which, may, which makes it quite an exceptional week. They really push, they don't behave on the training pitch like kids. They are kids, but they don't behave like this. That's the biggest step they made in the last five or six months. But on the other side, they are humble enough and understand the situation that they are surrounded by a bunch of world-class players. So now what they have to do, you can send them out to a club where you hope they can get games on their bed, their bed, 
but they have games in the under 23s and have outstanding high quality training sessions here we make these decisions person by person player by player and don't say they all go out on loan or they all stay here for Ryan Brewster it was the right thing to do in this moment we all agreed it was the right thing to do but because that's important as well the boys need to find a manager in the best possible way who knows them already that's the case with Steve and Ryan so that helped a lot Steve Cooper was one of the coaches for when Ryan Brewster won the World Cup in the England under 20, 20 under 17s and uh, and Ryan Brewster was top scorer of the World Cup under 20, 17s with eight goals so he will work under a manager that he that he knows Swansea and Steve Cooper asked already in the summer if he can go and it was not the right moment he came out of a long-term injury so I thought he needed to, to just get the rhythm he get used to his body again but he needed to get used to the intensity now he's already training for a long long period so it was a go good moment to give him on loan and to help Swansea hopefully and Swansea can help Ryan and then us, that was good. But for the others, I don't see anybody in this moment who would benefit more from a loan spell than from staying with us. So very good wise words from Jurgen Klopp there. And Jurgen Klopp listed as many as seven positions for Minamino to play in. Absolutely incredible. This is what Jurgen Klopp said about Minamino. I watched a couple of games of Salzburg and they played a lot in a diamond and Minamino was the number 10 very often he can play as a stri second striker he can play on either side of the wing and for Japan he even plays as a number 9 and he can play on, on both wings he, but, but we thought from a defending point of view it's the most natural position for him that he knows because I don't want to give him kind of a playbook read it and now you know what you have to do so he could defend naturally actually but it's not the only position he can play no 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 he played in a 4-4-2 both wings second striker for Japan the only striker there is a lot he has to offer and I loved the game that Minamino played in against Everton in a completely new team not only because he was not together with Sadio and these guys who you give the ball and they do something completely by themselves it was completely teamwork to find together during the game it was an exceptional performance so there is a lot of uh, um, expectation on Minamino and uh, I think that Liverpool need a versatile player like him who can fill in in many different positions he's like a jack of all trades and I love it love that about him really looking forward to seeing Minamino in the second half of the season and that wraps up this uh, Liverpool video I really hope you enjoyed it thanks for watching have a nice day see you later guys goodbye